All right, for this video, we are going to go over uh, currency conversions, which is a pretty important topic. It's actually a really a good topic to know, like especially if you travel. Um, I remember once I was in Prague and I got absolutely destroyed on a currency conversion because I was being stupid and I regretted it. I mean, I'm a math teacher and I, I lost out on this. It was not cool. Um, anyway, uh, let's look at this. It says a bank in Canada. Um, offers the following exchange rates between Canadian dollars and euros. The bank sells one Canadian dollar for 0.82 euros and buys one Canadian dollar for 0.78 euros. A customer which is, wishes to exchange 800 Canadian dollars for euros. All right, the, the important thing you guys need to take out of this is basically that um, there's two rates here and you need to know which one to use. Well, this is a bank in Canada, so they're dealing in Canadian dollars. So you need to ask yourself, um, for the first question, find how many euros the customer will receive. Okay, so um, he has Canadian dollars, um, but he wants euros. So what is the bank doing? Well, the bank is buying his Canadian dollars. So we are going to use this rate right here, the second one. Okay, so let's figure this out real quick. So let's look at A. Now, the best way to do these is just to set up a proportion. I always do... Let's see, he wants to buy euros, so we'll put euros on this side, and then he has Canadian dollars. Now, you can just set it up like this, it's nice and easy, and we'll just, we're will just we finding X here, how many euros. Now, he has 800 Canadian dollars, and underneath is where you put the rate, okay? Well, we decided that we were going to use this rate right there, the second one. Um, and why are we doing that again? Because... Um, <clears throat> basically uh, what the the bank is buying Canadian dollars okay so we will do one Canadian dollar we put that with the Canadian dollars to 0.78 euros now this is pretty pretty straightforward to solve you just do one times X which is X and then 0.78 uh, times 800 or 800 times 0.78 so if we put those together um, let's see it would be 800 times 0.78, what do we got? 624 euros. Okay, so he gets 624 euros. And the reason it's less is because the euro um, is stronger than the Canadian dollar. Although probably not for long because the euro is going down and the Canadian dollar is going up. As of right now, it's October um, of 2012. Okay, anyway. Let's look at part B. It says the customer has to cancel his trip and changes his money back later when the rates are sell one Canadian dollar for 0.815 euros and buys one Canadian dollar for 0.779 euros. Now usually these rates are really long. I just rounded them um, so it's a little easier. But if you went to uh, like you know a money exchange place, the rates are like I mean they're probably 10 decimal points long. We use the we sell information to find how many Canadian dollars received. Okay, well, in this case, he's just changing his money back because his trip got canceled. So we're going to find how many Canadian dollars this time. Uh, and then we are going to... He has euros here, so we'll put 624. Now, again, you have to look at what um, rate you're going to use. Well, w what is the bank doing here? The bank is selling him Canadian dollars. So we are going to use this one right here. Wow, that was a pretty straight line. That was pretty cool. Um, okay, anyway, I have horrible handwriting, so I'm really proud of that. You guys are like, Bueller, Bueller. Quote that. No, that's an easy movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All right, okay, so what do we got here? So let's put a, let's get going. One, and then uh, it would be 0.815. Okay, now all you really have to do here, this is X. And then this is 624 divided by 0.815. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Oops, that's not what I want. That's my recording software. So we will do 624 divided by 0.815. And we're going to get 765... Uh, $765.64. Okay, so $765.64. Alright, so 
764. Now, if you look at that, he's, he started with 800 right here, and now he has 765. So that, the difference there is the bank commission. That, that's how the bank's making money when they change this money. Okay, so basically Part C says, well, how much did he lose in the transaction? Well, he actually lost quite a bit. Okay, so 800 minus, you know, 765.64. And so we can just do, you know, uh, let's see, 800 minus uh, 765.64. And we get 34.36. Okay, and then this is going to be in Canadian dollars, so it's I'm um, going to be to two decimal places. Okay, so 34.36. Now that's quite a bit of money to lose. I mean, he started with 800, so you know, it's not quite 5 percent, but that's a little over 4 percent of the money lost just by exchanging the money twice. And that's what you'll see um, generally worldwide. Um, the rate may not be that bad, but you are you know going to lose money, and you should shop around um, to try and get the best rate. So anyway, I hope that helped out. Um, you know, basically, I, what you can take out of this is set up a proportion. Always solve for, uh, you know, you know whatever you're solving for. Put for x right here. Um, you know, to set up a proportion, the buy and sell rate. Just think of the bank. You know, if it's a bank in Canada, they're gonna, you know, they're dealing in Canadian dollars. If it's a bank in the U.S., they're dealing in U.S. dollars. If they're a bank in Thailand, they're dealing in Thai bot, that kind of thing. And, it, and, you know, and a good rule of thumb is, you know, um, you know, when you're converting um, to another currency, you know, you use the smaller number. And when you're, you're going back to, to their currency, it's going to be the, the bigger number here. Um, you know, if this, if we use the other numbers here, that the person would gain money. And obviously that's not going to happen. Okay. So anyway, hope that helped. Uh, take it easy.